Uh, first thing is I do have some already tomatoes cut up, but I'm going to cut up a couple of others. Now, um, most real authentic southerners would use a real green hard tomato and that works perfectly fine and some would say best. I tended, when I tested this recipe, I tried it with ripe tomatoes, with almost ripe tomatoes, with really green hard tomatoes. My favorites were the ones that were just a little bit starting to soften. So they weren't hard as rocks, but they were, uh, weren't totally ripe. If you use a totally ripe tomato that just kind of cooks into mush, so it doesn't really work. So I'm cutting the tomatoes in uh, about a third of an inch to a half of an inch slabs. I'm going to coat them in a, a couple of things. One is a little bit of buttermilk, about three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. And then my dry ingredients are uh, some flour, some cheese, some grated Parmesan cheese, some cornmeal, and some panko. This is a, a Japanese version of breadcrumbs, kind of a bigger, thicker uh, breadcrumb, and it tends to make the uh, whatever you cook with it will kind of have a more uh, rough, rustic, crunchy texture. So I'm just going to mix those things up a little bit. And then I'm going to add some flavoring to my dry mixture. Some salt, of course. Everything, especially fried things, is good with salt. Some pepper. Some cayenne pepper for a little spice, a little heat. And then I'm also adding one of my very favorite cooking ingredients. This is uh, pimenton de la vera, uh, otherwise known as smoked paprika. It's Spanish smoked paprika. Um, it's kind of... Uh, it kind of is like how a, a chipotle pepper is a smoked jalapeno, so it has that sort of similar smoky flavor, although not quite as hot as a chipotle. It's just going to add kind of smoky goodness and a little more depth and dimension. So I'm going to mix this all up and then uh, turn it into a shallow bowl here for dipping my tomatoes in. The thing with any kind of frying is that if you cook too hot, your foods will burn before they cook. If you cook too cool, your foods will absorb uh, a lot of oil while they cook. So kind of just about right, 350, 375 generally is about the, a good temperature for frying. All right, so one at a time, using one hand for wet and one hand for dry, it'll help from, keep it all from turning into a big mess. I'm going to dip the tomato slices in a little buttermilk and then dip them in the dry ingredients. Make sure they get a nice coat. And set it aside. So, checking on my oil here, and it looks like it's starting to get hot. Okay, so, move my ingredients aside. I'm just gonna start placing them in the oil. Kinda carefully and gently, and it won't take long. Uh, they only need about a minute aside. And depending on how deep the oil is, whee, depending on how deep your oil is, it might not even need to be turned. And now another trick about frying is you don't want to crowd the skillet too much. Uh, the more food, obviously my food here is room temperature, and the more food I put in, the quicker the temperature and the oil is going to go down. So uh, you want to kind of don't crowd it, don't shock the oil into getting too cool too fast because then you'll just get that uh, situation I mentioned earlier which is that you'll, your food will absorb the oil rather than get a nice crisp coat on the outside and just cook in the oil. Now while those are cooking, we'll see if I can multitask here, I'm going to make a kind of a, a couple little uh, accessories for the dish or an accessory for the dish. In the recipe in the heirloom tomato cookbook, the recipe includes a cherry tomato relish and an arugula pesto. Um, rather than make the pesto, I'm just going to serve the fried green tomatoes on a bed of arugula. I think a bed of arugula is just about the perfect thing for almost anything. So back to my cherry tomato relish. I'm just going to make kind of a quick little vinaigrette for it some olive oil, some balsamic vinegar, some salt, some pepper, and some garlic. Whisk that up together. And then I have about a pint of both uh, red and orange cherry tomatoes. So these tomatoes are totally ripe. 
going to add those. They're just going to be kind of a juicy, bright little topping for the fried green tomatoes. So now I'm ready to plate up my fried green tomatoes. And uh, these, fried, these green tomatoes will be a perfectly fine dish, just like they are. But this is just going to kind of send it over the top. And that's, um, you know, really one of my, uh, 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 my favorite way of cooking is recipes that are simple, not complicated, easy to make, but have nice little special twists. And, you know, there's nothing easier than just laying some arugula on the bottom of a plate, but that's definitely a nice little special twist. And make the whole thing just kind of more of a dish. Okay, and then just a little of this cherry tomato relish. And there you have it. Fried green tomatoes with arugula and cherry tomato relish. <laughs>